Hello everyone, uh, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So I will be discussing in this video regarding a photodiode. So what is photodiode is the first question. So photo means light. Diode is the normal diode which we are using. So then what is the difference between photodiode and the normal PN junction diode is the first question. So PN junction diode is a uh, that is the normal diode is the diode which operates in forward bias only. It will not operate in reverse bias. Whereas in a photodiode, it will operate in reverse bias. So in PN junction diode, the responsivity is very much. Whereas it is, so it will be used only in forward bias. As the, and one more thing I would like to tell you, in PN junction diode, the current which is generated is because of the voltage which we are applying. If we are applying the voltage, if it is in forward bias, it will generate the current. But in case of this photodiode, the current is generated because of photons. Because of this photons, the current is generated. So clear? So this is the main difference between photodiode and PN junction diode. In PN junction diode, for a conclusion, it will operate in forward bias. Photodiode will operate in reverse bias. Then why we will use photodiode? What is the uh, main thing in this? We will discuss in applications as well as in between you will come to know. Yes. So today, uh, I mean, yeah, I will start the session. So this is the symbol of photodiode. So this is photodiode symbol where this is same as normal PN junction diode but it is indicated by arrow mark as you can see this is light source or photon I can see. So this photon is emitted on this diode. So this is photodiode. So we will come across this circuit of photo P, uh, that I mean this photodiode. So this photodiode is uh, uh, this is P side, this is N side, this is applied voltage, load and this is IS which is photo current and this is ammeter which is this is micro ammeter. I will just write out this is a micro ammeter. Then a question arises why this I said initially that this voltage need not be applied but this is required for the current generation but the driving force for this current generation is not voltage this is clear so one more time yeah so the driving force i mean because of which the current is going to be generated is not because of this particular voltage it is because of this photons which you can see here this voltage is only applied for just the current flow but the generation of current flow, the driving force behind this generation of current force is this photon. So, and this will operate in reverse bias. So, as this is the main intention. So, you can see here, we are applying a voltage and this is the load and this is saturation current. I mean, sorry, the photo current. So, here, once we are applying the voltage and this is in reverse bias. So, no need to worry about this voltage. So, we are just making like N plus side connected to positive terminal and this is negative terminal. If we keep like this only, this voltage will never make the flow of current in this circuitry. This is the first point because it is reverse biased. Now somehow we have to operate this particular circuit. So the driving force for this circuit is this photon as I already told you. So this photon, now we will say this photon is incident on this particular window. So this is this window. I, 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 I think you are able to see here. So this is window actually. So this is window. When light falls falls on this particular window, this is a window, then the, the, I mean the electron and holes will be generated. I mean it will be there, but it will, there will be flow of current. So I would say before going to this particular topic, just we will come here for a while and then we can understand that in a very clear sense. So this is friend, this is like, uh, that is a valence band and this is conduction band. These are having energy levels called EV and EC respectively. So this is EG, which is energy gap. This is EG, which is the energy forbidden energy gap. So this now the electrons are here actually in this valence band electrons are there so as of now these are here so we can just make an analogy like this so electrons are there here now 
once now you suddenly they will not move to conduction band some energy is required so for this particular energy we will give some light source or photon so once photon hits here i mean to the valence band electrons then electrons will gain some energy called h nu yeah so h nu energy is gained by the electrons once energy is gained they are capable of traveling from this valence band and conduction to the conduction band so this is the main thing so once they move to the conduction band they will be leaving holes behind this as you already know like once electron move from this band to the conduction band they will leave behind the holes but electrons will be now present in conduction band after this energy application so in the same way we will come here to this particular circuitry once we apply photons the electrons which are present here will move, will gain some energy by this photon and will move to the conduction band i mean conduction band in the sense they are capable of conducting now so electrons will move here it will be in conduction so electrons will be here and holes will be here and now there will be uh, and some if there are nearby there will be recombination happening electron hole pair recombination we will say but electrons which are present here i mean somewhere far away from the uh, this uh, uh, break, breakdown region so i mean the uh, this depletion region so electrons which are far will get attracted towards the positive terminal of this battery and the holes which are here far away from this will get attracted towards the negative terminal of this battery so in this way there is the current flow yeah so the current flow since the electrons are attracted in this way i mean to the positive terminal of this battery the electron since the electrons are moving in this way the electric current will the flow of current will be opposite to the direction of the flow of electrons so this is with respect to conventional current we will call so always as you know the electrons we will measure the flow of current with respect to electrons so this is very clear so once electrons will flow the flow of current will be shown opposite to the direction of this particular flow so this is conventional current so as the electrons as i already told you electrons are moving towards the positive terminal of this battery current will be generated from here to here that is 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 the photo current we can see so later we will be discussing more about what is photo current and what is the output of this particular uh, i mean circuitry so now we will come to this characteristics vi characteristics of this particular region so as i already told you it will be operated in reverse bias mode so this is iv characteristics here this is current so as and when voltage is applied i mean the photons will be uh, this is with respect to photons so as I, you can see once voltage with respect to voltage there is different intensity of lights i mean different intensity of this particular uh, lights so here i1 i2 i3 are this intensity you can see so now now we can think in one way i am applying some photons i mean i am giving some light source here if i give photon if this particular uh, whatever i am giving the photons it if it increased if it is increased by me if suppose say we i am giving some four photons here four photons if i make it eight photons then what will be the effect definitely as per this graph once the flow of uh, I, i mean the number of photons are more the current will be more you can see so the current wave is going to increase like anything so this is with respect to intensity so we can conclude that i is a directly proportional to current this means once intensity increases i mean the number of photons increases current will increase and vice versa so this is the entire concept of this photodiode so now we will have some of the measurements like what is the parameters with respect to which we will measure this so there is a responsiveness what what we call so this response is responsiveness is defined as so uh, as a ratio of is with p incident so this is a p incident is nothing but the number of photons incident with respect to and this is yes is is nothing but the photo current which is generated so this is the ratio of photo current with respect to incident photons so this is with respect to response unit it is denoted by r here so next is efficiency how efficiently the i mean the uh, 
photons are generated. So this is the ratio of Ne with number of photons. So this is number of photons. So quantum efficiency we can say like number of photons responsible for con contributing this particular current is nothing but the quantum efficiency where Ne is nothing but the number of carriers and Ne is number of photons. So this is quantum efficiency. So now we can conclude that the total current of the, I mean the photo current is nothing but I is equal to I naught into Eb divided by Kt exponential power of this one minus one uh, minus of Qep divided by H nu. So this is the standard uh, this way and maybe in one of the session if you need um, I will cover how to de derive this particular formula. So this is already derived. So I am uh, explaining. So this is I naught is nothing but the saturation current and Ev is nothing but the, this is electron and this is uh, uh, I mean the uh, voltage and this is Boltzmann constant temperature in Kelvin and uh, this is Q is nothing but as I already told this quantum efficiency and E is nothing but uh, this electron and P is I mean the incident of photons and H nu is nothing but the uh, energy E equal to H nu we already know that so uh, this is H nu so this is the energy we can say so this is all with respect to photodiode so the conclusion is if number of photons are increased number of current I mean the current flow will increase and uh, one more key point is if it operates in uh, I mean if it it will operate in reverse biased reverse biased form so one more key point is many of uh, will have uh, doubt which are already clear what is the uh, what we, what will happen if this is operated in forward bias if it is operated in forward bias then it will operate as but we are operating in this in reverse bias so that is the main thing you have to remember and then rest if it operates in forward bias as i already told some of the uh, demerits which will be having so here now coming to applications so why uh, i mean why it is used so if we use normal pn junction diode we will not be able to calculate the number of photons uh, there is no uh, i mean uh, relation with respect to number of photons there there is only relation with respect to uh, the voltage which we are applying okay so that is the main thing so here we can use this in application as photo detector what is this photo detector photo detector is nothing but a circuitry which will detect the number of photons by knowing the current that means if we know the current then definitely we can tell what is the amount i mean number of photons which were present or vice versa so in order for this one we will take the photo detector and many places i mean these find many applications like in camera circuitry it will be used and many in the like uh, light related traffic lights yeah street lights this is the major uh, uh, thing which is used in order to measure the intensity in one of the circuitry photodiode is must so this is yeah related to photodiode thanks for your watching yeah so please subscribe to my youtube channel have a good day yeah meet you all soon bye